everybody, this is Anthony with you, the Italian Bible-believing Jew, and welcome to this first video of refuting the OSAS, or as also referred to, or known as, Once Saved, Always Saved Theology Doctrine. For many years I used to believe this Once Saved, Always Saved stuff, until the Lord brought me to the realization of reason and the scripture text itself. What it actually says, not by what I was taught by some phony baloney preacher at a pulpit. So, we're going to go through, for each video, one argument at a time, or at least a set of arguments at a time, under the same thought, of statements from people, or some of their doctrinal statements and conclusions, that once they've always said this true. Well, from a scripture standpoint, we are going to disprove that false teaching, and we're going to start right now in this first video. So stay tuned. This was another conversation uh, with an OSAS believer on Facebook I had some time ago. So we're going to go through some of the main arguments and then I'll give a brief rebuttal for it. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first statement is, Had Christ died to pay for anyone's sins, yet in any other scripture you quoted? Okay, I remember in this conversation I had posted some scripture about some other topic and then this person asks this question. Basically, from what I get, is that if Christ died to pay for everyone's sins, that means all of our future is paid for too. That means no matter what I do, where I go, what I say, I will never lose my salvation. Because I am once saved, always saved, right? But that makes no difference if he died or not. Nowhere does it in Scripture does it say that when he died... He already forgave you of all your sins. So, that's not going to wash at all. Now, however, in this person's case, then that means I can lie, cheat, and steal, commit murder, and adultery, and have false gods and graven images in my home, because those Ten Commandments don't apply to me, right? I can just raise hell and do whatever I want. You really believe that, huh? So I can just do all those things because God will not tell me what to do. You see, that is the hard problem. You don't want God telling you what to do. You don't want some guy telling you, Thou shalt not. Like, don't eat certain things. So let me just get this straight. Before Christ died, we keep rules. Right? Do I have that right? But since he resurrected and ascended to the right hand of the Father, we don't have to. So we can just sin all we want to because, hey, he died for the whole world. All of our sins are washed away, right? That's Baptist doctrine. That is not Bible doctrine. Let's move on to the second statement. No one could be perfect. He was trying to show them that so that when he died and paid for their sins, they would accept his payment knowing there was no way that they could be good enough to earn it on their own. Okay, first of all, learn to use better grammar, and structure your sentence better. That's one of my pet peeves, people who can't get their structuring correctly of their writing. So no one could be perfect. Yes, that is true. Nobody can be perfect. Okay, it is true that in the flesh we cannot please God because, as Paul wrote, in, in our body dwells no good thing. However, show me one place in the Bible where God was just trying to show people that you can't keep my commandments. All you need is Jesus saying a phony baloney sinner's prayer and poof! It's like a magic potion of sorcery. You know how you eternal life. All because you said a prayer. That sounds like a magic potion or a magic spell, doesn't it? Hmm. Baptists have turned biblical Christianity into a sorcery prayer saying, uh... Ritual, I guess. That does not sound good. <sighs> Ridiculous. Let's move on. Let's just move on to the next one because that's driving me crazy enough. 
Also, if we disobey our parents and don't follow their rules, does that mean we are no longer their children? Oh, God. Almighty, please help me. I can't freaking stand this. This is already irritating me. I mean, the stupid questions that they will ask. But let's go ahead and answer this since we're already on the video. Yes, it does mean that. Parents can disown their children. God can too. This OSAS doctrine is not the truth and is poison for any real believer to hold to. And don't use the born again argument because nobody is completely born again until after death. Let me ask you a question. Can somebody be alive physically but dead spiritually? Yes. See the scripture given below. How can a child be their parent's kid if they're dead? It is wrong to say that their son is dead and will always be their son. Um, he's no longer their child. Has anybody ever read Luke 15? For this my son was dead, and he's alive again. Did his son die physically, or did the relationship die? You see, it's very clear when you take the English text for what it says. Keep your opinions out of it. Okay? Let's use an illustration. Suppose the President of the United States said to an immigrant, Now that you're a citizen of this country, I just want to tell you that your citizenship is secure. You can never lose it no matter what you do. We love you and care for you. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Do you really think that the immigrant will say to themselves, Wow! That's wonderful! I'm going to do my best to keep from crime and from breaking the laws of this land. Really? No, you're crazy if you think that. Nobody, not even me, would honestly think that way realistically. He would take advantage of it and just live however he wanted to. I mean, that's just plain honesty. Think about it. Do you really think... That if God gave you a free pass, no matter what you do, you can't lose your salvation. That you're going to all of a sudden be so grateful that you're going to live for Him the best you can and go to church every time the door is open and read your Bible every day and pray? Don't kid yourself. You will not. Don't lie. Remember, thou shalt not bear false witness, commandment number nine in the ten. No wonder so many of these professing fake Christians in the Baptist churches and every other denomination that teaches this crap refuse to keep the Sabbath and the dietary laws and say, I can eat whatever I want, I can celebrate whatever I want, and then the parents wonder why they fall out of church. Hmm. Gotta think real hard on that one, don't we? Not for true Bible believers like myself and many others. Hmm. Let's quickly touch on a common OSAS usage blunder. Ephesians 1.13. Now this is a laughable one. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Let me ask you a question. Does the verse say, In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, whereof the seal cannot be broken? Hmm, that's funny. I don't see that in the Bible text anywhere. Why? It doesn't say that. So why do people conclude that? Because they use the word sealed, like a seal cannot be broken. Okay, I don't know what seal ever exists on this planet that cannot be broken. In fact, no seal in heaven can be broken. How do I know that? Well, the Lamb of God himself even broke the seals off the sealed book in Revelation chapter 5. So, that debunks their belief, doesn't it? Any seal can be broken by God, if he wills it. Stop making it say what it doesn't say. Otherwise, you're adding to the word of God, which will make you a liar. Proverbs 30, verse 6. Illustration. If a parent says to their adopted child, in whom also after that you chose to continue living in our house, you are sealed with our approval of residency. So does that mean that no matter what the child does, he will never be told to leave the home and live somewhere else? No matter what he does, right? 
He can just commit all this crime we want, he wants to, or she wants to, and still be accepted as a child in their house, right? No, that's ridiculous. Okay, look, don't be stupid. That just gives a child a free ticket to raise hell and live however they want to. Even Ted Bundy's mother stated that she gave her son unconditional love no matter what he did. I wonder if that encouraged Teddy to commit the crimes he did and excuse them. You think? Where are these once saved always saved heretics getting this crap from? I'll tell you where they're getting it, from their well-paid pastor, because they want to sit down in cushioned pews and sing in the choir and do all these things that don't require much effort. That is from their personal life. As we conclude this first video, we can clearly see that one saved, always saved doctrine is clear heresy. Don't believe it and don't fall for it. As long as you have breath on this earth, you can lose your salvation. All right, brethren, that's all we have for today. So love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep his commandments, and read the King James Bible. Thanks.